So, um, eventually decided to remove uh, this uh, oil filter cartridge assembly to change the safe because uh, I don't trust the safe there. Considering that it can also cause uh, the water or uh, coolant leak, which can also cause the mixture of coolant and, uh, and the oil. So uh, that has been removed, and um, no, this is, so this is the distance. So this we are the old sink was removed. So I, I've gotten the new sink. Um, so the, so this is the pack. The pack. Uh, anyway, it's inside here. So the seal is here, so I'm going to mark the seal here so that um, you know that we eliminated or not necessarily elimination, we ruled out uh, all the seals that can cause this mixture. That I know is there. Okay, let me use the word gasket, not safe. So any gasket or component that can cause the mixture of uh, coolant and the engine oil. Uh, transmission oil has all been ruled out, replaced so that you know, even the gas head gasket replaced, like I say, it wasn't the gasket that caused it, but um, we also had to change it because eventually the, the mixture blocked the radiator and then uh, caused overheating and then uh, the gas head, head gasket failed. So, here it goes. Okay, so I also uh, taking the radiator of the THP engine for them to wash. So they've opened the cover. This is the plastic cover. As I see, it's not thoroughly washed. When it was first opened, almost all these uh, holes were blocked. Uh, but now they are clean. So we have, we have to buy foil for them to do the, the washing. So now it's thoroughly uh, clean and the porous again. So. Trying to cover it back and then mount back on the vehicle. We may have to open it again, I don't know. Because I know there will still be some of those uh, mayonnaise um, fluid. Uh, that's oil mixed with coolant that will still be trapped on the engine and the heater matrix. So they will still come out. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, so see on the THP uh, engine. Uh, so I mounted everything inside the car, but I observed the thermostat uh, still refused to open, which was uh, what happened before. And um, so I now scan the vehicle, not necessarily scan the car. I use my <coughs> PP2000 to see if I can uh, test the thermostat to know if it opens, and it should open safely. So that's when I knew. Um, it's more mechanical, electrical. So when I pull out the wiring connector, uh, and I saw from the vehicle wiring harness, and I saw these are the two wires, this is the connector to the thermostat. So these two wires are for the thermostat. And they were attaching each other. They, it was like this. So I suppose they were probably touching each other at the time or so. So, and um, I don't know how those two wires peeled off. So what I'm going to do is to tape it. No, I don't think tape will be able to do any work here. I'll probably use a um, four mini gun, uh, apply here, so that uh, to stop the two from touching each other. But if you put tape here, it uh, will be very difficult to be able to stay. Because then it's almost at the edge. So I'll use put gum here so I can stop the two. Uh, hopefully, it has not affected the thermostat. Uh, I don't know how it squeezed like that. Uh, we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, so far, the water uh, didn't come out from here when I started it. Uh, I had to change this uh, hose from here to here. So, so I'm still observing, but I notice there's a clearance here. Um, we had this uh, hose plugged in. So, but it was uh, if this one has been able to seal it off, but I know there's a clearance. So eventually, this may have to be replaced, uh, but not now. So, 
Uh, let me deal with the thermostat and then see what happens. Okay, so uh, I'm still on the THP engine. Uh, so far, no more uh, oil mixture or in the engine cooling system. Uh, so what I'm trying to troubleshoot now is the, uh, the cooling system. That has a, um, see because since after we did all the assembling of the system, the engine doesn't overheat. However, um, for some reasons, water keeps peeling out from here. So anyway, so today, which is uh, Saturday, 25th of uh, February, 2023. So the thermostat housing uh, observed that the thermostat inside it uh, is not opening and um, so what I did was I put my PP2000 try to actuate it how I knew it wasn't opening was this particular the lower hose was very very cold while the upper radiator hose was hot uh, even at the time the fan came up so it refused to become hot so I run my PP2000 try to um, test the the thermostat was uh, an electronic thermostat so try to test it and it showed the open circuit so i knew uh, there's um, an electrical issue there so like i showed in the previous video um so i removed and saw that two wires uh, goes to the connector of the thermostat um we are touching each other you know they paid off and we are touching each other anyway so eventually like i said i applied the uh, a gum on it, we call it 4 mini gum, so and it became hard, so we was able to put, hold the two wires from touching each other. So I put it back, run the PP2000 again, this time around the, the, what, the thermostat worked and uh, the open circuit didn't come back, showed uh, no fault detector, so that one sorted out. Uh, started the car again and uh, so this time around the lower hose become uh, warm you know though just not as hot as the upper one but a little bit uh say even right now i can feel it just not too hot this one usually is hotter so i'm still feeling maybe um there's that uh, mayonnaise uh, oil uh, no coolant the one mixed with oil is still maybe trapped around that thermostat and not allowing it to open fully but now at least it's open uh so i said okay now we're standing let me test to be sure the water pump is working because it can also cause same symptom the two hoses uh, the lower hose will not become hot so i tested the water pump uh the usual way i test it uh, without removing the water pump and it worked i asked somebody i said the vehicle did the check myself so that is ruled out so um so there's something else that could also make this not as hot as it should now coming back to the coolant reservoir uh, of course I'm, I'm still running water and uh, so water what, uh, what i did was i took it for just a uh, drive around uh, my street and uh, came back Open the bonnet, saw water has already spilled out, but not from the cover, but from here, spilling out, spilling out from here. So, and um, which is uh, not normal. So, as I do, it will happen, but when you're on drive, uh, in motion, it will happen. Maybe when you put pressure. So, what I think is, it's no longer the, because I, this is a new host as well, you can see. So I also swap in this new one, did the same thing. So what I could see, look at this. You could see there is a clearance inside. You can see, it shouldn't be like this. Let me put it out so you understand. Okay, so, ah, oh, see those things, they are still here. So, see this thing here, this flat uh, part of it. There's, some, there's an obstruction here that is supposed to, this space is supposed to enter and so that it will, it will allow you to move like this. So I think the one inside here has one. So that's why it's shifting. It's not supposed to. But I looked at the seal, the seal is still intact. So, as you can see, it shouldn't be doing like this. So that has given it gap and uh, so it's as if this place, 
has expanded. Now this uh, small part of this that come out where this thing is lost and has expanded. So because normally this is where water is supposed to go if it's overheating. So and uh, of course and what they are noticing once it starts spilling out from here, you see the, that the water level has expanded. Sometimes you may not even get to this point, you will even stay here. It will come up, stay here, uh, around that maximum mark. Yeah, it will be spraying out from here. So it's not like water level has even come up to this point. Uh, you see that it's spraying out. It will still be here, but it will be spraying out. So um, we should not allow the system to, to, you know, to get as hot as it should so that this one will stay hot. So I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change. I've actually changed this for the owner. This that was a few years. Was it last year or two years ago? I got a used uh, expansion tank or coolant reservoir. But this time I recommend to him to get a new one because so this thing they do fail. Yeah, same uh, model in 308. Uh, is it? I think 307. Are they the same? I think a little bit different. So. They all do have that, like RCZ, they all have this issue. Sometimes they start leaking from here. So, if possible, one can should just get a new one. So, but of course, I'll have to test this to be sure it doesn't have that issue. We need to rule this one out before you touch any other component and the cooling system. Now, other things that came up when I scanned the car. Um, you showed um, a two... Uh, fault that has to do with the turbocharger uh, that's a P2261 and a P2262 uh, so uh, I hope I got the error codes uh, correct so and um, my understanding is it's pointing at this uh, dump valve um, the definition there is that it's stuck open so um, now there is um, a valve inside it that I that's supposed to be lubricated so when it dries out yeah it won't be able to move so what i do is let her open it lubricate it put it back if the fault comes back then we'll have to change this um i, have to, I don't think it's the electro valve that is attached under the intake manifold that uh, the code is pointing so what i think i think is this because it says um uh, turbo compressor uh, discharge, discharge electro valve. That's a compressor discharge electro valve. So it should be this particular dump, we call it dump valve, which is also an electro valve anyway. Um, so we'll deal with this. Um, then the next thing, the second fault, uh, this one, it showed three, two faults. Then the third fault that came up um, was a um, lubrication issue. Duplication fault. We showed them um, what's the code P one five A seven P one five A seven. So um, what well, first thing I did was I cleared the fault as soon as you switch on ignition again. It, it comes by. We, we don't even need to start the car. So which is an indication that uh, it's most likely a connection issue. Uh, so I came and checked the oil pressure sensor, uh, which is attached somewhere under here. Um, this is the connector. I don't think you guys can see it from here. Uh, it's actually under the tubo charger. So um, I disconnected it, checked the connector, everything was intact. I plugged it back. And um, it did the same thing on the PP2000. You know, it cleared the fault. In fact, it doesn't even clear. As you try, attempt to clear the fault, it's coming back immediately after the attempt. So. Uh, because normally if the sensor is bad, it's supposed to at least when you start the engine then it will run and the fault will come up. At this time it's not even waiting for the engine to start or, or you know, so to even to switch off the ignition, it comes back. So another electro valve that, um, there's an electro valve um, behind this engine on the cylinder head that, that is also a suspect. Uh, even though because this is indicating uh, pressure oil pressure so which that one I may also need to confirm that it's connected so that um, I need to rule that one out before because this other if the eventually the issue is from this uh, oil pressure sensor the the solution is to change it you know maybe the circuit inside is something the sensor itself has actually failed 
So, but I need to be sure that it's not from that solenoid there. Maybe in the process of putting the cylinder head, it was not uh, connected or properly plugged in. Uh, so, these are the three issues. Um, yeah, more like three issues. The expansion tank or reserv coolant reservoir. Um, the compressor discharge electro valve. Hopefully, that is the cost. That is the because uh, I don't, I'm not sure is the two name, but it should be because these are the only two electro valves that have to do with the turbo channel. This one here and the other one here. Uh, but the other one there, um, I don't think uh, it has a name, but not uh, a discharge compressor, compressor discharge electro valve. So I'll start with this. Then the, set, the third one now is the lubrication issue, which is the oil pressure switch or sensor. Probably the overheating it had in before affected it. I don't know. Or maybe the cylinder head when it was mounted back, uh, the electro valve that's behind the this cover. I have to remove this cover. You can see access it, but sometimes it might be easier to remove the cover to easily access it. It all depends because all these this they will have to come out before you can access it. <sighs> so so these are the three four. So I'll be taking the one after the other. I may even have to leave the car at my place and be doing it myself until I rule some of these things out. You know, I'll start I'm going to start with this. I need to be sure the cruise, engine cruise system issue is resolved. Um, so that if there's any work that still needs to be done on it, we deal with it before we come back to the tubo charger and the oil uh, sensor component. Uh, uh, okay, I won't call it sensor yet because it might not be this one, it could be the electro valve. As we will deal with the lubrication issue. So, so far, that is it. Other than that, the car starts are wrong well, you know, until when you push the throttle hard for the turbo charger, it kicks in, but the second time you make that bend, you realize that uh, there will be loss of power uh, because of the turbo charger issue. So, so that is it for now, and um, today is uh, election day, so I'm going to suspend the work till next week. So, We'll see how it goes.